In this lesson, we'll be creating a multi-axis contour. After completing this lesson, you'll be able to create a multi-axis position 2D contour toolpath and modify tool and toolpath parameters to avoid collisions. Let's carry on with the file from the previous example and let's create a multi-axis positioning contour operation. So far, we've machined a lot of our part. However, we still need to take care of these contours this pocket, as well as this pocket from the top. This is all before the part gets removed, inserted into soft jaws, and has the bottom finished as well. So from here, what we need to do is we need to create a multi-axis toolpath that can cut that geometry. And we have to decide which direction we want to cut it from. We have some issues here where we might potentially have a clearance issue. So we're going to go ahead and measure the distance between the bottom of the part and the top of our fixture. Now notice in this case, the distance is 0.382. Now 0.382 is not very much space, so we won't be able to come in with a half inch end mill or even our 3 8 inch end mill. We'll need to find another option in order to cut that geometry simply because we just don't have the room. But let's go ahead and start the toolpath process and begin creating everything and then we can select the tool on the fly. We're gonna go ahead and come into 2D contour and in our tool selection, we're going to select all, go to type, and select flat. We're going to say OK. And then in dimensions, we're going to focus the diameter on something that is smaller than our 3 8 So we're going to go from 0.25 and we're going to go up to 0.375 and see what tools we have available. So while our 3 8 would technically fit in that space, it's a little too tight and too close to the fixture to be comfortable, especially with lead-ins and lead-outs and the fact that we have material that has to be removed there. So we're going to have to come in with something a little bit shorter. What I want to do is I want to come down into my samples library and take a look at the quarter-inch end mill that's in here. So notice that the flute length for this one is 3 quarters of an inch, the body length is 0.85 and the cutting diameter is 0.25. So this tool isn't quite long enough the way it's currently extended outside of the holder. So we will have to go back in and modify the parameters because a collision is likely to happen between the holder and the part. But let's continue creating this operation and we'll come back and modify the tool a little bit after. For our geometry, we're going to focus our attention on this boss right here. But notice that it's trying to grab the entire section here. And we don't want to do that. And if we right click, notice that we don't have the option to select just a portion of it. If we hold down the shift key and we select this edge, it's pushing it down to the bottom. And that's because currently the tool axis is pointing up. So before I make my contour selection, I'm going to change the tool orientation. And it's going to be based on this boss again. So again, the Z coordinate system is pointing out, and now my contour selection should be a little bit easier. From here, it lets me select just this edge, and notice it's starting at the bottom and it's working its way around the top. Depending on how much space we actually have in the orientation of our tool, this will probably work, but we'll have to come back and simply evaluate it afterwards. We don't need to add any extension because the start and end is inside the part, and we've actually already finished this edge all the way to this fillet and around from the top side. So this should be fine in terms of extensions. For the heights, we don't want to use the selected contour. We're going to use a selection, rotate this around, and select the other side. I don't know how much farther we need to go because we have actually already cut that geometry, but I am going to extend it a little bit, in this case 0.05 in the negative direction. For our passes, Again, I don't know how much needs to be removed, so we're just going to get started with the base settings. We're also going to leave all of the base lead-ins and lead-outs, which the lead-in radius value and the vertical lead-in is all fairly small numbers. So we're going to say OK, allow it to create this toolpath, and take a look at the results. Using inspect, and we measure this section, you see that it needs to be at least one inch, which tells me that obviously this tool is too short, and we have to edit the tool itself. So right now, the overall length of the tool is two and a half inches, and the body length, or the length that's extending outside of the holder, is 0.85. So I'm going to extend this out 1.125, or one and an eighth, and this is typically called the projection. 
the projection or the amount the tool is sticking out of the holder. Generally, you want this to be as short as possible, especially with smaller tools, because the longer that you have a tool sticking out of the holder, the less stable it's going to be. A lot of times you'll see tools that have a taper that goes out for the shoulder, and you can even see the preview on the screen here showing a different diameter value that you can add for the shoulder and the shaft. Everything looks okay here. We're going to increase this to four flutes. And again, these numbers should replicate a real tool that you have. However, in this case, we need to make sure that we have a tool that's long enough as well as small enough to fit in between our fixture and our part. We need to update it, so I'm going to use Control G and allow it to regenerate that. And then I'm going to select the entire setup and I'm going to simulate this. I'm going to jump all the way to the end and then I'm going to go back one and then I'm going to play through this operation. So you'll notice that there is a red section here and the red section is a collision. So it's showing me a collision here because that is past the cutting portion of the tool. Also notice it shows a collision with the part here. If we hide the underlying part and we go back one operation and we play through this, it's showing me that the holder is actually colliding with the part as well. There are a couple ways that we can get around this. In general, it's not a very good idea to machine this contour from both sides, but in some instances that might be the best way to do this. What we could also do is, again, find a tool that is longer and able to create this cut. The first thing that I want to do is come back in and I want to modify the parameters of this toolpath to have multiple depths. So I'm going to allow it to step down a quarter inch at a time. That way we get away from the collision problem that we're having with the holder. But you'll notice that it's starting those step downs all the way back here. And this is a product of the parameters in which we define the heights. So the top height right now is the top of stock. However, we can base it off of a selection, for example, this point, And that way, the toolpath starts at that position rather than way out here. Even though the clearance values are still way out based on the stock, we can start the contour process a little bit closer. The next thing that we have to do is, once again, modify the tool. Now again, if we don't have a tool that can actually make this cut, then we need to make some adjustments. We need to find a holder that tapers down a little bit more, something that can hold the tool a little bit closer without getting actually into the stock that we're trying to cut. There are many different types of holders, and this again could be a possibility to make sure that you have the correct holder for the tool that you're using. If we use select holder, notice that nothing appears here. If we go through our tool library, there are plenty of vendor tools and plenty of holders that we can use. But in this specific case, the one that comes with this tool from our sample library is fairly wide, so it could potentially produce some problems. I'm going to increase the body length to two inches, and then I'm going to regenerate this tool path, and I'm going to see if we still have that collision problem. So we'll select the entire part, again, multi-axis setup two. And I'm going to jump all the way to the end and notice that we still have a few small collisions. And you'll notice that they're oriented along the contour here. So I'm going to jump back one operation. And then I'm going to play through this and see where those collisions are. So notice that each time it's also coming all the way back up to that, that height, all the way away from the part. And this is obviously wasting a lot of time. We don't want to do this and have it waste all this time not cutting the part, so we need to make some adjustments to those parameters. But notice that the collisions that it found aren't necessarily collisions with the stock, and everything seems to be okay here. And if we slow it down a little bit and play forward, it seems to be colliding with the part here in the non-cutting section of the tool. And while that's not necessarily a problem because that geometry's already been cut, it could just mean that we might want to go back in and find a tool that has a larger cutting flute section. For example, if we found a quarter inch end mill that had a one inch cutting section and a one inch shoulder length, then that would remove the issue that we're seeing with the collisions around the outside of this part. 
but it doesn't help us in other cases where we have the tool just simply coming too far away. If we come into edit one more time and we go back into our heights, we have our feed height, which is based on our top height, which is our selection. And that is where it starts to change from rapid to feed. We have a retract height, which is based on the stock top. But if we base this on something like the selected contour for the top height, or if we simply use the top height and we add a small amount, for example, 0.25, then this should keep the tool closer for each of those intermediate movements. So we're just going to go back through one more time and simulate this, jumping all the way to the end, coming back one single operation, and then playing through again. So you'll notice that it's coming in, it's hitting this bottom section, working its way around, and we could actually come in and potentially change the direction so it starts from the top, which is already machined, and ends down here. And that would potentially help us out with some of those possible collisions or loading of the tool. But at this point, I think we've got a pretty good start to creating the tool paths for these contours. So again, because we put in enough work, let's go ahead and make sure that we save our file and then move on to the next step.